Hey guys, Kevin Anson with TheVideoCourse.com. In this lesson, I'm gonna talk to you about Dynamic Link and why you're probably doing it wrong. Dynamic Link is basically the integration between After Effects and Premiere. I've been talking to a lot of people lately and it seems that everyone I talk to is making this harder than it needs to be. I mean, to be honest, about two years ago, I too was doing it the hard way by rendering out my After Effects compositions with an alpha channel, bringing that into Premiere, until I heard about Dynamic Link. Now, even though I discovered the power of Dynamic Link, I was still using Dynamic Link the wrong way until I sat down with an Adobe developer at NAB in Vegas last year, and he explained to me the best way to do this. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, so I shot this meetup event a few weeks ago at Ticketmaster in Hollywood. That's actually me right there on the uh, Sony FS7 shooting on uh, a Rokinon 85 millimeter. God, I love those lenses. But we'll just use this as an example because I just happen to have it up on my computer right now. All right, so let's jump over to After Effects. I already have my lower third pre-made here. And I'm gonna show you guys the proper way to bring this lower third into Adobe Premiere, of course, without rendering, but we'll do it the proper way using Dynamic Link. So what some people might wanna do is they might wanna just take this lower third and drag it straight over into Premiere. See, now it's in there. You're good to go, you just imported that lower third, boom. But the issue with that is that every single time that you bring in a lower third, you are Im importing the entire After Effects project file. So if you think about it, let's say you have 10 different graphics that you made in After Effects and you're bringing those all into Adobe Premiere one at a time like that, you are effectively importing that entire project file every single time you do that. So every time you bring that project file into Premiere, you're re-importing all 10 of those graphic files. So by the end of it, you've imported 100 compositions into Premiere. So every time you throw a graphic on top of your timeline here, it's really gonna start bogging things down. So you're not gonna be able to edit very fast. You're just gonna have to wait for things to load all the time. It's just gonna be, become a real pain. So when I sat down with the guy at NAB in Vegas, he explained the best way to do this is with your media browser. So find the project file that you created and navigate to that and then import only the composition from that project file. So as you can see, we have the dynamic link .aap project file, double click on that. Now I can see all the lower thirds in here that I created live. So right click on that, go to import. That's the proper way to do it. I'm gonna delete this old one. So now each time you import one of those compositions, you're only importing the composition itself. You're not importing the entire project all over again. Hope that makes sense. So if I wanna go and make a change to this lower third, it's really easy to do that. Just go back in here into uh, After Effects. Maybe, maybe I got his title wrong or something. So maybe he's the IT wizard. So now when I go back into Premiere, boom, it's live right there. So I don't even have to re-render it out again. Another thing I wanna show you that's pretty cool is sometimes if it's been several months since you've worked on a project and you can't remember what the name of that After Effects project file was, all you have to do is go into Premiere and right click on the layer that you know has the lower third in it and go to edit original. That's gonna automatically open up the original project file in After Effects that that is linked to. I love that feature. And of course, there's countless other ways that you can use Dynamic Link, but I'm just showing you guys how to use it with graphics. You know, you could go into your Premiere timeline, right click on this and bring all this stuff into After Effects. But for the sake of time, I just wanted to show you guys that. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe. Feel free to leave your feedback and questions in the comments below. If you have a better, faster way of doing this, of course, share that as well. And if you have any questions for videos you'd like me to make a lesson about, join our Facebook group and let us know, and I'll see you next time.